Good evening. This is Overseer M. Alexander. We had a little technical technical difficulties, so we restarted. Thank you for joining us. Again, let everybody know that we're live and we're on. Amen. Words for the soul. Words for the soul come to inspire you, to uplift you, to let you know that you are loved, you are chosen, you are forgiven, you are accepted, and God loves you. So today I'm so excited this evening to have some special guests of mine. I tell you, I really love these two people. Um, I have my oldest daughter, Tara, <laughs> beautiful smile, and my anointed husband that I love dearly, Bishop Alexander. <laughs> Praise God. We're coming tonight um, just to share. I want to read a scripture first, coming from Psalms 139 and 14. And this is when I share with our, our youth and for everyone that I meet. And this reminds us that I will praise you for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Marvelous are your works that my soul may know very well. We have to know that we are made in the image of God and how God made us. We need to be pleased. I was going through a book um, last week. You know, especially during this COVID time, we have a chance to revisit some books. And this one book was called Healthy by Design. And I was looking at some stats um, during COVID, how people have um, gently creeped up in their weight upwards on the scale. And I can say that's me. I don't know about you because excessive snacking and unhealthy eating habits have been common. So sometimes during that time, we find ourselves not being at the weight we want. But by design, we can uh, make up our minds to do something better. So we're going to share a few testimonies of things that we have journeyed through in life. We'll have Tara share a few of them, Bishop, and then myself. Thank you for joining us on tonight. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, as my mother did say, my name is Tara. Hey. Um, hey there, girl. <laughs> <laughs> um, basically, um, my story is, um, it really started when I was in middle school. I um, was always, I always saw myself, let me say that, I always saw myself as the big girl of the group. Um, I was an athlete, I worked out multiple times a day, and yet I still felt like I was just not fitting in um, size-wise. And so I had went through a, a stage of my life in eighth grade where I decided to starve myself. And I thought that, you know, by not eating, I would drop all this weight. And my friends became so concerned, I think they even came to y'all about this. Um, they had me like talk to a counselor at school like they were like Tara we're scared that you're not eating and mm -hmm. and it was not to like make anyone feel like you know um, to take make people feel like they had to be concerned about me I just didn't know what to do like I, I was told that you have to be a certain size to get the cute guys in school or you had to have you know these certain things or certain looks to be seen by guys and in eighth grade hello of course i was guy crazy and so i was trying to do things that caught their attention and the only way that i could think of was change my weight change my appearance and it took a long time to accept that i was never meant to be skinny like i was just never meant to be skinny and now i'm okay with it like i'm okay that i'm plus size i'm okay that I am not a size two or size four. I am okay with my size. I have lost weight since last year, thank God. But I'm I'm happy with Tara. Like Tara makes me happy. That's good. Um, like I'm wearing my shirt intentional today. It says I'm pretty, but then it says for big girl, and it's crossed out because I have heard that so many times. You're really pretty for a big girl. Why can't I just be pretty? But that was how, that's how I grew up hearing people say, oh, you're really pretty for a big girl, you're just not for me. And that's how I saw myself because everyone said that I wasn't for them because of my size. And I, I want to constantly make a statement that my size does not determine my beauty. There you go. My mm -hmm. size does not determine your, your happiness of making me feel that I'm pretty. Yeah. You know, like I'm pretty regardless whether you like it or not, honey. Let me tell you that now. <laughs> so I I love how I look. I love the different looks that I do because if y'all have watched on our, our True Vine page, I have many looks. I love them all. So 
this is this is me, and this is yeah. why I I strongly strongly love to talk to young girls that are suffering with their bodies because oh my gosh, there's so much pressure, you know. Yes. Um, and yes, if yes, you yes. can just talk to someone that's been through that pressure and be like, honey, I understand this will not happen overnight. Right. But it comes with being around people that accept them for them, for you to see how it looks, for it to accept you for you. Oh, so, I like it. that. Your journey. That's great. Thank you. As you were talking, I thought about our middle daughter, Tasha. Um, she was always the tallest child in the classroom, starting from elementary, not until she got to high school. She's still tall. But than she, all this. Um, she had one or two people that were just as tall as her. And I remember to this day, as a matter of fact, we were talking about it this week, how my mother, her grandmother said, Tasha, you are beautiful, and you put them heels on. Yeah. And, you know, um, there's times she'll wear them, and she says, Grandma, I remember what you said. I'm wearing my heels. But just remind her, don't be ashamed how God made you. And that's why I open up with this scripture. You are fearfully and wonderfully made. God does not make any mistakes. He made you just the way he wanted you. Bishop, share with us some of the things that you travel through. Well, you just, before you get there, I want to read that scripture. Uh -huh. Because we pray that uh, scripture over the girls every, every single day. Uh -huh. Before they left the house. Mm -hmm. We pray, we anoint them every day. Mm -hmm. And we used to say, I, well, I'm primarily me because you was already out, out to work. I have the, the joy of getting them ready to go to work, uh, to school. Mm -hmm. Listen, I don't pray, but I fact. Okay. <laughs> I used to, Lord Jesus, Lord, Lord Jesus. Anyway. And we're but, still cute. Praise the Lord. Yeah, Hallelujah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he teaches me when you did the hair, when I did the hair. <laughs> it was a whole lot easier. Yeah. But, but I was comfortable doing the flats and, yeah. and the uh, rest and stuff. Mm -hmm. But I, I would annoy them every morning. We prayed every morning. We used to watch Power Rangers. Yes. And then we get ready to go to school. Yes, we did. <laughs> yes, we did. Remember those days. Remember those, those good days. But yes. we, that was a scripture that we said over them every single day. Mm -hmm. But my journey is not about size. Because as an athlete growing up, mm -hmm. um, I did gymnastics. I pumped weights and stuff. I had the, I had the, the built, mm -hmm. the athletic ability. What camera am I on? I'll make sure I get the right yeah. camera. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that's good. That's good. But um, mine was my stunner. Yes. And I started, uh, especially when I get nervous or angry. When I got nervous or angry, man, I started real bad. And <laughs> this beautiful woman next to me, mm -hmm. uh, when I first met her, mm -hmm. this wonderful woman that y'all so wonderfully praised, yeah. she used to tease me as well. Mm -hmm. But it was okay because it was always done in love and never in a mean spirit. But I remember um, going to the school, was doing a Shakespeare play. Mm -hmm. um, I was in high school okay. and I wanted to be one of the characters. And I remember going out for, to try out for the place, okay. for the play. It was Midsummer, Midsummer Night's Dream. I remember it. Okay. And I didn't care what character it was. I was a magician for stagehand. Right. You got it automatic because nobody wanted to move stuff around. So that was my thing. I, I studied for the longest while until, gosh, your first message. my first sermon. Yes. I remember that when because they caught me by surprise. I came in. I was working. I was a drill instructor. Walked into church on a Friday night, and the pastor said, you ready? I said, who do what? Because I thought I was going to do the offering. Mm -hmm. He said, no, you're going to preach. I said, okay. But my Bible was in the, truck. in the truck. So I went to get to the truck where I got you. Mm -hmm. uh, walk with me. And then you got Elder Clayton and Sister Clayton. Mm -hmm. When I came back in, they prayed for me in the hallway. Mm -hmm. And then I went back in and preached my first sermon. And after the sermon, I remember you saying, did you notice what God did for you? I said, what? I mean, I forgot what you noticed. But I noticed anything. He said, you stopped studying. Yes. I said, what? <laughs> and that was, that was it. I still stutter now and again when I switch when I'm angry or get nervous, but it's no way what it used right. to be. Yeah. And so God took me through that journey. But even when God called me to preach, I was just trying to figure out how he going to do that. Right. Mm -hmm. I, I just said yes, but I just I was thinking that he's going to use my stuttering as a means to whatever. Mm -hmm. But he healed. Yeah, he did. And it's wonderful. And so I don't know what your story is. I hope you have put some comments at some of the things that you had a journey through through life. And um, so we can just have some dialogue going on. Um, for me, sometimes being quiet, just sitting back, being an interview. Right. <laughs> you want to ask me a question? No, Go ahead. Hey, I'm going to interview the interviewer. <laughs> <laughs> I remember when I met you. Yes. I used to think you was a pushover. Really? Yes, you, yes, you yes. Say, really? Yeah, because yeah. uh -huh. people want to. You, 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 you never, about this yeah, so you never answer them back. Mm -hmm. And that used to hurt me. Uh -huh. And I said to you, you don't, because you're a Christian, don't mean you have to let them walk on you. That's right. And then uh, she started building her courage. I remember I told her something. She said, no. 
I said, oh, hold on, hold on. <laughs> you ain't supposed to come to me. <laughs> but you used to be really passive. Yeah, not anymore. Praise the Lord. When you find your voice, keep it. Don't let nobody shut yeah. you down. That's real. That is real. Don't let anyone mm-hmm. shut you down because they will try. Words of wisdom. I'm going to ask you both. Give me words of wisdom that you could share with someone to help them know who they are. Because through this journey of life, sometimes we forget that we are a child of God, that we are fearfully, wonderfully made, that God has purpose and destiny in our lives. So if you would speak to the both that are watching, um, something yeah, that would... Yeah, you go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. You're so profound half the time. I'm just off what you but, say. But I, I believe that uh, for me, in my case, yes. I had to trust God. Mm-hmm. In spite of what I saw was meditation, and God didn't make no mistake when He called. Right? So I had to trust that process. Right. So if I can give words of wisdom, would be trust the process. Trust it. God got you, mm-hmm. and the scripture said, "When you open your mouth, He will fill." Yes. So I, that was a scripture that took me through. Mm-hmm. But whatever your, that issue you, you're yes. dealing with, the body shaming and all the other um, limitations people try to put on you, right. is that you have to be willing. To trust the process. Yeah, I said yeah. this morning that God would take the unlikely to do the unusual. Yes. And so sometimes he will use the unlikely. Yeah. And you might be the unlikely, mm-hmm. but he would use the, the unlikely to do the unusual. Amen. 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 Well, mine's a little different. All right, there you go. <laughs> mine's a little different. Um, because what I suggest is don't allow society to make you who you think you're supposed to be. That's good. Um, I am... Um, a strong to determine if we're even happy. Come on now. Um, are we stopped? I don't know. Hold on. I don't want to keep going in this already. Okay, you're back. Okay. <laughs> to determine if we're happy because um, society doesn't know us. Right. Society doesn't know your own personal story. Everyone's story is so different. Um, and I'm on part. I'm a part of multiple groups on Facebook, and it's amazing how. Women are attacking women right now instead of uplifting. And because we are constantly bashing each other, we are hurting ourselves, women. We are hurting ourselves as queens. Mm -hmm. And because of that, we tend to tilt our crowns. We tend to be isolated. We tend to be depressed. We tend to have unhealthy eating habits. We tend to jump into diets that are actually killing us rather than helping us. And I strongly, strongly, strongly suggest... Find out who you are. Beautiful. Learn who you are. Yes. Find out what makes you actually laugh. Because I was telling my parents, like, I've been in situations where I laugh because everyone else did, but it wasn't funny. Yeah. It wasn't funny to me, but everybody else was laughing, or I didn't want to look like the person that couldn't take a joke, right. so I laughed. But find out what actually makes you laugh, mm-hmm. what makes you cry, what makes you feel good in your own skin. You know, take yourself out. Do some window shopping. I know right now COVID's a little crazy, but find out what makes you turn your own head, honey. Like what makes you be like, okay, today you doesn't matter. And so I just, I I suggest that you learn who you are. Find your highs, your lows, your oops, your okay, or your wow God moments and embrace those. Because once you do that, when they say you're pretty for a big girl, you be like, no, honey, I'm just pretty, period. Yes. There's there's no other other than who I am. I don't have to have my size, my 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 clothing, my you know, name brands, non-name brands to define my own personal beauty because I took the time to know who I am as a person. So that is what I strongly suggest. Baby, just learn who you are and embrace that. I like that. Go ahead. I'm gonna say my one of my favorite sayings. Now, you know, when I was trying to get promoted, I yeah. asked them stuff. Yes. But my thing is now I'm too old to do that. Yeah. I don't laugh and it's not funny yeah. and I don't scratch and I don't have an itch. Yeah, yeah. And you know, as you were saying that, and be proud of whatever your skin tone color is. Yes. You always look at different things. Don't go through stress and anxiety and wondering how people like you. Love yourself. Love yourself. Yes. Get the chance to build that your relationship with the Lord so you'll know who you are and your purpose. So I just want to encourage you. That God said that you are fearfully and wonderfully made and you are made in his image. And he doesn't make any mess. So you're fabulous. And I thank God for you. I am overseer Emma Alexander. Yes, we are going to have prayer. They're going to talk to me. They're reminding me what I need to do. We're going to have prayer. 
<laughs> Don't forget to like and share this page. We pray because you know what? We want to seal what has been done. And knowing that I don't know who's going through what. You may not feel like you have any hope or you're feeling alone, alone today. And I want you to know that we are praying for you. And you tuned in just in time so you can get a word that will encourage you. Bishop, would you close us out in prayer? Sure. Thank you there, Overseer Alexander, for allowing us to join you on this wonderful uh, platform. Yes. You know, we've been on the other side of the camera. Yeah. Today we're on this side of the camera. I like the other side better. Than <laughs> <you>. <laughs> yeah, me too. <laughs> I can cheer everybody up. Amen to that. Praise, praise, praise the Lord. But we'd be glad to uh, pray. Uh, I just want to say this for those who are tuning in and uh, maybe having some issues that we didn't cover. Mm -hmm. But it's 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 an issue that puts limitations on you. My, my, I my. hope you heard what we're saying. Don't let limitations, Amen. what other people put on you, right. block you. Yeah. God's got a word for you. He's got yeah. a plan for your yeah. life. Yeah. And he didn't make no mistake when he called you, when he assigned you that, that task. It's for you. It's Amen. for you. It's for you. So let us pray. Amen. Gracious and loving God, as we come to the end of this, this platform, and we pray for those who tuned in, you, that something would have been said that would encourage them, that would stir them, that would cause them to take a re-examination of their lives and say, I can do better because you called me to better. You don't have to settle. God, we pray now that something was said that would stir them up on the inside, that when they finish this broadcast, they'd be more than willing to say yes to your will, God. My answer will be yes, Lord, yes. So we say, Father, today, as we close down this, this platform, but your word did not close down. You didn't make any type of mistakes whether you called and they assigned these people who are listening to the task they assigned to. That's, it, it's designed and orchestrated just for them. The journey may be difficult, but thank God you got their back, God. So we say today, Father, as they are listening, seal this word in their heart. And Lord, let them know that you did make no junk. They are fearfully and wonderfully made. And their, their future is brighter than what they think. Their best days... Is yet to come. Yes. And we thank you now in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Before we close, as he was praying, I thought about this. And if you have talked about yourself, ask God to forgive you. Yeah. Mm. And mm. forgive yeah. yourself. I want you to remember that. Yeah. Mm. That's forgive good. yourself so you That's can good. move forward. All right. You have a blessed you day. This is good. I love being a bishop. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. We can talk about the cash app. You know, oh, so yes. we, we don't never talk about a financial gain, but for week 31, yes. you yes. have been doing yes. this and we never ask anybody to seed into you. But I think this is a season when we need to lift up the men and women of God yes. who, are, who are leading through this COVID. Yes. There's no playbook for this. No, no. And some of us are learning as we go. Right. Lord knows I don't learn more about social media than I've learned all these years. Facts. And, and facts. I, yes, facts. <laughs> I learned how to pivot when I needed to pivot. Yeah. And so um, if, you, if it doesn't have to be for us and you've got a man or woman of God, seed into them. Amen. If they got a cash app, do it right now. Because this is a season right now yeah. for your blessing to, to grow. If you be obedient. Amen. And we'll upload the cash app for Royce for the Soul. Because as Bishop says, 31 weeks. And this this came birth through COVID. Yeah. Um, and I'm telling you, I, I have watched every week Probably because I'm week. here. But <laughs> it's, it's, it's so beneficial. You know, it, it really, really does touch conversations and topics that we have to wait for a conference to hear about. Yes, yes. And we're talking about this weekly. So please, please. Find it in your heart to continue to bless ministries. So what's her cash app? So just oh, her cash app, before we put it in, is the dollar sign, Emma, E-M-M-A, and then WOW, W-O-W-W. -W -W. Okay. So there's two W's at the end of Emma WOW. And we'll again put it in the comments. So thank you so much. Thank you. Praise God. Amen. Be blessed. See you next Saturday. <laughs> I mean, next Sunday at 6 p.m. Are you going to do something? You're not going to take it for Christmas is Saturday. No. Okay, let's do it. Next Sunday. <laughs> find out. Next Sunday at 6 p.m. Amen. Praise the Lord. Yes, that's right.